Hello everybody, welcome back and welcome to all the new folks who've signed in on the channel. I really appreciate you signing on. This, this channel has uh, three different subject areas that it covers and they mainly relate to what I do for a living. I am a timber framer, so there's some timber framing content which folks are starting to get interested in. I'm also a furniture maker, cabinet maker, woodworker, so there's a fair amount of interest in some of that content, especially the shaper or spindle molder content on there. But I also really enjoy harvesting my own material, so there's a fair amount of interest in the small scale logging and forestry side of things as well, so that's great. But the good news is there's a fair amount of content coming up on all those subject areas, so stay tuned. But today what we're working on is finishing up a kitchen cabinet door project that I have on the go right now. These are stain grade solid maple kitchen cabinet doors with raised panels. And while I was working through the project in the last day or so, I realized how much I was using this uh, small combi head by White Hill Tools. Now, I've talked about this cutter head in, in the past and I'll put some links to videos associated with that in the description below, but I realized I never really caught any footage of the actual cutter head in action. Today we're going to change that. Now what's really interesting with this particular job is we could not find any suitable profile to match some of the cabinet doors that are going to remain in the, in the kitchen. Um, in router bits or in in an existing shaper head. So what we had to do, we had to get White Hill tools to grind us the appropriate knives to go in this cutter head as well as in the panel razor. So let's start there. Here are a few pictures of the doors that we have to reproduce. Working with the client, I got a number of really good pictures as well as measurements of critical features. In the end, after looking through White Hill's expansive catalog of profiles, I found some panel and sticking profiles that were very similar to the client's doors. This gave a good starting point and all I really had to do was ask for a couple of modifications. When I got up in the morning the draft CAD diagrams were waiting in my email for my approval. Okay so after a short wait this is what arrives you get your knives and your limiters in one little plastic box separated by a piece of foam just to make sure they don't clank together and get damaged during transport. Now, as I said in the, in the uh, voiceover section, there are a number of different ways that you can have your cope and stick knives ground for these cutter heads. Now, I'm going to use the terminology cope and stick because that's what's popular in North America and it seems like most people watching these videos are from North America. Now, in the interest of, of uh, getting, to, uh, getting the fun stuff, we're going to go rather quickly through these. Now, if you have any further questions, go ahead and ask them in the comments section below or you can certainly go directly to White Hill and they can guide you in the right way. Now, the most economical approach to having a coping stick knives ground for these cutter blocks is usually to have both the coping section and the sticking section ground on one set of 55 millimeter knives and limiters. Now, imagine this horizontal line is your shaper table sur surface. Now, if you are inclined to keep the unused portion of the knife safely down below the table, which is generally seen as safer and less complicated for guarding and whatnot, especially with a manually operated machine, for this knife grind scenario, you would cope from right to left with a cutter block rotating in a counterclockwise direction. And then when it came time to do the sticking profile, you would flip the whole cutter block over, reverse the direction of the shaper, feed from the opposite way. And that would expose only the sticking section of the knife up above the table. Now that assumes your machine is reversible. A lot of people today are buying three phase machines and running them off of household power with the assistance of a variable frequency drive. Now. The variable frequency drive will have a reverse button on it, but that does not mean your machine was originally designed to be reversed. So you have to assess that before you choose this option. If your machine cannot be reversed, what you can do instead is you can have these knives ground so the cutting direction is reversed for the two different sections of the knife. Then what you could do is instead of flipping the whole cutter block over and changing the rotation direction, all you would need to do is chip, flip over the knives and the limiter within the head and maintain the same rotation direction, but now the previously used portion of the knife will be down below the table and the new section above. Now imagine these indicate the opening size of your shaper table. Now what happens if the diameter of the cutter block and knife combination is in excess of the whole size and your shaper table. Well, there are a couple of different things you can do. There are different knife stock that your profile can be ground on and you should talk with White Hill Tools about all the different options and limitations available for that. Now, the other option is, is you can have your cope and your sticking section ground on separate small knives and this way the only exposed section of knife is the one that you're actually using. Now, I went over all that very quickly, and if you have any questions, like I said, 
go ahead and post them in the comment section below. But White Hill Tools has always been very helpful whenever I've, ever I've had any questions for them. They want to make sure that you get the right cutter block and knife combination for your work conditions and your machine. So don't hesitate to ask them any questions. Now, let's get these knives mounted in the cutter block and get to work. Okay, so since it's the dead of winter in Canada and I want to use my heated shop, means I need to use my small machine, so I'm going to use the small combi head as well as the small individual knives for the cope and stick. We're going to start with a sticking profile, but you notice that the last time I used this cutter block, it was as a rebate cutter, and the wedge blocks and slugs are still securely installed in the block. It's important to remember that even when you're using it as a rebate block, these wedge blocks and slugs still need to be in there and secured. But of course, we are using knives and limiters, so we need to take these wedge blocks out. Okay, so here we are. Now before we st install our new knives, it's important to clean off the block and wedge blocks. I just make sure that everything seats in there properly and there aren't any, any foreign objects or pieces of, of sawdust to get in the way. So we are running this in a conventional manner, in other words, in a counterclockwise rotation, counterclockwise direction, feeding from right to left. So the knives go here and the limiters go here. Okay, so right now they're in there loose. Now one little trick that I use to make sure that the knives are located properly on either side of the block, because out of necessity there's a tiny, tiny little bit of slop in these knives. What I do is when I'm securing them down, I grab them by the knife and I hold them up like that. And that basically pushes the holes in the knives to the same side of the pins in the block, ensuring that everything is located equally on both sides. And I'll snug those down just to make sure that they don't move. Do the same thing on the other side. Now they're located in the same spot. Now I go around and give everything one final tightening. And there we are, ready to install the machine and make some test cuts. Now I typically run my sticking against what's called an outboard fence. So these knives are designed to remove the entire face of the stock. The upboard fence approach is convenient and practical because it profiles the stock at the same time as bringing it down to final width. But for the less advanced, more conventional milling approach I wanted to show here, the fence I had installed wouldn't work. So what I'm doing is I'm reinstalling the factory fence, which allows for a smaller fence opening. If you're interested in learning more about the outboard fence approach and how it can be used, let me know in the comments below. Okay, one thing you can do that's very, very helpful for when you're getting uh, getting the machine set up for your production run is when you're actually running your stock, running your blank components, mill a few extra pieces. It's a great opportunity to use, you know, stock that's otherwise inferior. As long as it's representative of your final components, you should be just fine. So, as you can see here, I have a component that I milled earlier for an earlier run of these doors, and I know it's correct. So what I did is I ran another, I ran some of my extra testing pieces earlier today and uh, I just cut it off to make it easier to see and as you can see the two match perfectly so that means the setup I have today exactly matches the setup I had earlier which I know works so we're good to go now one of the things I realized when I was reviewing this footage is that even though the primary reason for doing this video is people wanted to see the cutter heads in action, the reality of it is, a properly guarded cutter head with the use of a power feed, well, there's not much to see. But what we can do is let the results speed, speak for themselves. This footage is sped up a little bit so it's not reflective of the actual feed speeds. So in a matter of minutes, we had the sticking run on a large batch of doors. And as you can see, the quality is excellent. Despite the challenging grain and a couple of pieces, we didn't have any rejects in this run due to quality. Okay, so as you can see, we've swapped out the knives. We have the smaller coping knives in here now. I want to touch on one other thing before we, before we get to work. 
So this is a this is a quick little coping sled I made a few years ago. And it was great. I managed to get good results out of it. But the problem is, because it's all made of wood, even though it's made of plywood, you never really knew when you took the thing out of storage if you hadn't used it for a few weeks, if it was still flat and true. Even though it's plywood, some things still warped and moved. And every job ended up being a bit of a trial and error exercise to get good results. You could always do it, but it was rather rather inefficient. So now what I'm using is the Agner Contramax system, which is actually very simple, uh, it's very fast, and it's very easy to get good results with. Now, if you're interested in this jig, um, just put a, a comment down below, and uh, and I can do a small video just on this, on this little device. But the take-home message really is that both these jigs and a lot of the commercially manufactured uh, coping jigs out there are designed to run from right to left. In other words, you need a counterclockwise rotating cutter head. Now, when you're thinking through some of the, the, the grind options that I talked about earlier on, you just want to make sure that your coping knives are set up such that you can run them in a counterclockwise direction because the odds are probably pretty good your coping sled is designed to run that way. So let's guard up and get to work. Okay, so that worked out really well. All the ends of all the whales are now coked. Now you notice that even on the end grain of this hard maple, the cut's very clean and there's very little in the way of cleanup required. So that's great. Now it's time to move on to the panels, but I think that's enough video content. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop it there. And in the next video, I will show the process of raising the solid maple panels for these doors using the Whitehill Tools small panel raiser. Then we'll go back to the combi head and um, use the rebate function to put a small recess in the back of the panel so they fit into the grooves. Then we will assemble the doors and uh, put a new set of profile knives into the combi head to do that small cove that's around the perimeter of the doors. Then they'll be ready to finish and send off to the clients. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and ask them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer them if I can. Till the next time, thanks very much for watching.